and drips away Days burn disintegrate Years roll along and fade Don't let them slip away Right here, right now, today These are the good old days Right here, right now, today Hey, these are the good old days In 1982, Mattel released the Masters of the Universe. They created icons of He-Man, Skeletor, and even the playset Castle Grayskull, which is the best playset ever made. The line seemed unstoppable in those early days, 1982 to 1985. But around 1987, we saw our last line of action figure to Masters of the Universe. We also, in 1987, saw a too little too late live action He-Man movie. Now, the movie was loved by some and hated by others, but really made an impact on everybody. And there were some tie-in figures that came in 1987 that didn't look quite like the Masters of the Universe we were used to. Now, the main reason that Masters of the Universe lost its steam in 1987 is there wasn't a core version of He-Man or Skeletor available at retail at that time. So new kids coming into the line couldn't have the main characters. So today we're going to look at that 1987 movie time and see if they really embraced it. Creating a movie version of He-Man, a movie version of Skeletor, and a movie version of the greatest place that ever, Castle Grayskull. After all this time, Grayskull is our... No! Mine. So the first thing we're gonna look at is the figures that were tied into the movie. The first one being Saurod. Finding a Saurod figure in good condition is real tough because it was made with all this uh, gold plastic which really shatters a lot. He was a character made just for the movie and it was a really cool design. He looked great in the movie and his figure looks really awesome as well. He shoots sparks out of his mouth, it's a cool toy. He comes with this gun that mine's missing so we gotta make one. And once we have that gun printed off, we just give it to Salrod here, and he is uh, essentially complete and looking for the shelf. Repro, but complete, just the way I like him. Next up is Blade. Now, Blade was the sword master in the uh, evil villains of the movie. Now, he came with uh, a little skirt, like a chainmail skirt, and two swords. Now, the swords he came with look kind of like big size not at all like they look like in the movie this is what his movie swords look like so we're going to do our best to make him a chainmail belt and some movie accurate swords
And once those are all printed off, we have this skirt here, which looks like it's going to fit in nice. And we're just going to put the old hot water trick to the test and put this uh, chain mail in the hot water and mold it around him. And uh, his arms are spring loaded, so a little difficult to work with, but we'll get it uh, around him here. And once that's in place, uh, that looks good. So that seems to fit him well. And we'll grab those swords that we made up for him that look more like his movie swords. And hopefully one will fit in his hand and one will fit in the sheath in the back. So there we are. And we'll just give him one in his hand and again one in the back holster with the skirt. And then next up is Gwildor. Uh, he's good. He's complete. He kind of looks funny, but uh, that's him. So these didn't look like the conventional Masters of the Universe figures we were getting at the time, but they were the movie tie-in figures, and uh, they were awesome in their own right. Now, He-Man had a much different look than he did in the cartoon in the movie, and so in an older video, I made a version of uh, the movie here. So you can see that video in my back catalog. I also made a movie version of Skeletor, and so we really need to combine um, the vintage toy, um, the first look of Skeletor in the movie, and then the Skeletor God look at the end. So I kind of wanted to combine all three of those into a vintage figure, and that gave us this. This is what the movie Skeletor looked like. So he could kind of be a vintage figure or both uh, versions of Skeletor movie. He's kind of a Spasari knife, a catch all. Next up is Castle Grayskull itself, and we're going to give a vintage one a bit of a makeover. So Castle Grayskull was in the movie, but only just for a minute and in the form of this painting. So there wasn't a whole lot to go with. But um, because He-Man kind of had a gold and black uh, look, that's kind of what we're going to go with. But here's a janky uh, shell of a Grayskull I found. The hinges are broken and it's empty inside and it is filthy. So we are going to see what we can do with it. The first thing we're going to do is uh, wash it up a bit. Now that it's all clean, we're going to see if we can not fix these hinges. Now their hinges are all broken off, so there's not a lot to work with. However, there is a little bit of uh, plastic left. Um, so what we're going to do is simply just drill a couple holes in the, uh, in the hinges themselves and use zip ties to uh, fasten them back together. That's done, we just trim off the uh, ends of it. And then it is time to paint this gray skull up. And so like I said, we're gonna give it kind of a black and gold motif like the movie He-Man. So the first thing to do is get a good base coat of black on both the inside and outside of this castle. And so uh, it actually looks kind of cool, just black like that. But uh, yeah, we'll get it all painted up. And then once we have it all black and uh, looking good, we're just going to do the same overspray they did uh, in back in the day with the black on the green, but we're going to go gold on the black. And with a very, very little work, that actually looks pretty cool. And so this is what uh, I think Intel should have done in 87 for a movie version of Grayskull. Now I needed to print up a new door, so I found a file and I uh, printed it up. And I printed it up in this uh, gold filament so that the Grayskull door will be gold. Um, so that looks pretty sharp. And once we have that, it's time to go inside. So we're gonna put our two floors in, um, and the floors are kind of where all the action happened. The first floor is where the elevator happened, and the second is where the throne and trapdoor happened. We're gonna forego both of those gimmicks in lieu of uh, something else. Starting in this first floor, um, we're gonna recreate one of my favorite scenes in the movie. Uh, there's a scene where He-Man was being tortured by Blade, who had an energy whip, and he was tied down. And so we're going to make a little uh, little area where He-Man, or whoever, is restrained for uh, torture scenes.
our little insert we made up to go in the uh, cover the hole that was left by the elevator. And for the wrist restraints, I just printed off um, the design I made for Dragon Blaster Skeletor. And uh, I did that in black and then found some of this chain at uh, the craft store. I was going to attach it to the cuffs, just using some pliers. And then once that's done, I'm going to take the end of the chain and attach it to the posts. And now we have this uh, place here where uh, you can attach and take <laughs> man, This is awesome. And uh, he's now chained there and he can't get away. Next is the sorceress, who for the whole movie was in this like force field containment unit um, that was powered by this like pod she was standing on, and uh, so she just kind of stood there in smoke. But every now and then you'd see like a blue force field around her when people would, would try and get through her. So I wanted to design up a pod and then figure out how we can make that force field happen. All right, so here's our little uh, field generator that she's going to stand on. So you can just stand your sorceress figure on there and pretend she's in a, in a force field. But I just drew up this little uh, energy uh, template, and I'm going to cut it out of uh, like a translucent binder divider on the cricket. And then once that's done, I think it's just going to sit in the ridge of the, uh, the pod that I made, and it will act as a force field around the sorceress. We'll see if this works. So I'm just going to, yeah, put it around in this little ridge that I have and we're going to uh, tape it together so it stays at the right size. And then that should just create um, a kind of a, a force field around the sorceress. So if you do this right, just kind of attach that and then throw it into the, uh, into the pod and then throw sorceress into the force field and uh, yeah, that kind of works. There we go. Now, a lot of things about the Grey Skull we remember as a children um, didn't really make it into the content of the TV show or anything. Like, this chair eventually kind of became Zodak's chair. But instead of having this kind of goofy-looking throne, we're going to try and give this Castle Grey Skull a more accurate to the movie throne for Skeletor to sit in. And once we have that printed off, it should just snap into place. We put the pegs on it, on the same as the original one, so it should just snap right into place. And we should have a swiveling, uh, kind of more movie-accurate throne for Skelly to sit in. Now, in lieu of having the trap door, I wanted to do some kind of homage to this big screen they had in the race goal to do all their spying on uh, the heroes, whether they were at Earth or wherever they were. So we're going to print out kind of a smaller scale to this, and we're going to put it over top of that place with a trap door went. So let's just get into our design space and make one up.
Now it's not nearly as big as the one in the movie, but we had to make the uh, castle still close and, and operate, so this is about as big as we're going to get. But Skeletor can still sit in his throne and spy on our heroes in Earth, or uh, looking at the cosmos. Now going back to our chained up uh, He-Man here, if Blade were to try and torture him with that sword, it would not go well. So what we need to do is make up a laser whip for Blade. So now we have our two pieces, the handle, um, printed off in a grey material, and the whip itself printed in this translucent red. So we're just going to quickly uh, glue those two pieces together, and once they kind of form the whip, and I'll just slide in there, perfect. Um, and now we have uh, essentially a, a great lightsaber, but we're going to use our hot water trick. And we're just going to put the whip part into the water, and it's going to become uh, very pliable. And we're going to just kind of shape it as we pull it out of the water because it will um, stiffen back up pretty quickly when it cools down. So we're just going to make this into kind of a whip in motion situation. And uh, just kind of naturally curve it as it comes out. And we should have a pretty cool uh, laser whip here for Blade. And one final thing we're going to add to our Castle Grayskull is Gwildor came with this Cosmic Key um, accessory, but it looked nothing like the Cosmic Key from the movie. So we're going to go into our 3D design space and see if we can't fix that. And then we just print it off, and Skeletor now has his own more accurate cosmic key. And our Castle Grayskull movie version is uh, complete. So there you go. There's our take on If 1987. Mattel fully embraced the movie time. Would that have kept the line going a little longer? I don't know, but I know I had a lot of fun doing this and love the way everything turned out. If you're having as much fun as us, if you like what we're doing, like, subscribe, share, follow, do all the YouTube stuff. If you want, you can support us on Patreon. We'd really appreciate it. But mostly, we hope to see you on the next video.